Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy and tonight I have the Lumreek Blended Malt by McNair's. This is blended by Glen Allakey's master distiller, Billy Walker. Has he created something magical here? I'll let you know when I nose it, taste it, and give it a mark. So, lots going on with this. It is a blended malt using Billy Walker's own Glen Allakey plus some Speyside and Isla single malts as well. This then was all finished in Spanish sherry, uh, wine brique and virgin oak casks. 10 years old, cast strength, non-chill filtered, no added color, coming in at 55.4%. ABV, blended malts um, coming back maybe into fruition. Compass Box really kind of started the ball rolling on that a few years ago, really displaying what blended malts can do. Um, we're seeing a bit of an uprising, I think, recently trending, more blended malts coming out. Um, it is really kind of like, um, a piece of art that like a master blender can really accomplish here. So Billy Walker um, did this one, used his own whiskey combined with some others as well. Um, the Speyside and the Isla stuff non-disclosed, but maybe I'll render a guess of what I think maybe is in here. Let's see how this is on the nose. So right away, lots of like heavy sherry notes that I'm used to from Glenallachie Malt. Definitely get that like minerality that you get from Glen Allakey, definitely in here. Red plums, sherries, nice and bold, very juicy sherry notes for sure. Then you get to this whole peat aspect of it. Definitely get like a danky kind of peat note here. The mineral peat note kind of combines, give me like this like wet basement, damp wood kind of note as well. Definitely get a lot of like subtle but complex spice notes in here. The spice that's combined with all that other stuff that I mentioned before. Really, really nice. Just a really glorious, really nice nose. You get lots of bold cherry notes. You get like a nice uh, integrated peat. The oak and the spice play a good role in this. Lots going on. Very complex in the nose for sure. Let's go palette. So that mineral note definitely carries over. Combined with the peat, got lots of like dank basement kind of aspect to this peat profile. I get crest toothpaste combined with a little bit of barbecue char. Now that crest toothpaste note, I've got that in whiskeys before, mainly Brooklady. Perhaps Brooklady is one of the Isla whiskeys in here. Definitely that barbecue char and toothpaste kind of mintiness I've gotten from Brooklady. Um, heavily peated stuff before, perhaps that's in here. The rum raisin um, raspberry drizzle sweetness, really, really nice on the palate for sure. Lots of sweet notes, rhubarb pie filling, really, really good. A honey note in this, a little bit of citrus, maybe like a orange oil, orange zest kind of note as well. Um, so much going on on the palate with this. Very complex. I would say that I pick up this wine tannin kind of note, and this maybe is coming from those barrique barrels. I'm not sure if that is fitting well with the rest of these notes. There's so much going on with this. To me, I feel like you get so many amazing notes and then this like weird oak, tannic dankness that just lingers on the palate just a little bit. Um, but I think there's great complexity to this. I absolutely love the nose. Very, very bold, very rich. I think Billy Walker did a really good job of showcasing Glen Allakey and then kind of adding a little bit of elements um, from Peter Whiskey, some other space side stuff. I think it works really well. I think where this whiskey won't quite get to the mark where I would recommend buying it without trying it first is that weird tannic note to me. There's, a, there's an element that happens with peated scotch and heavily sherried scotch that doesn't necessarily always translate to my palate. I think this one applies to that. I think that there's a little bit of an imbalance that's going on on the palate. And that tannic note that I get from potentially the wine casts is just a little off-putting. It just, it just throws the balance of this thing off. It is not as like elegantly refined maybe as I was expecting it to be or wanting it to be. Now it's only 10 years old, it is cast strength. It's not something that I would normally expect to be refined like that. But I just think that the balance on that finish, just a little bit off for me. Score-wise, still giving it a really high score. I think this is a nice 87 
out of 100. Like I said, just one mark shy of where I would recommend an 88, and that's where I recommend you buying this without even trying it first. I think that it is 100% you should definitely try it. But if you can try before you buy, that's where I would recommend this to be. Lots of stuff going on with this. You can really get in here, dissect so many notes going on. One of the more complex blended malts maybe I've ever had in my life. So that aspect it, I really, really like. Love the complexity. Um, really nice, enjoyable whiskey. It's just that weird kind of finish to me. Doesn't quite necessarily get it to that upper excellence of a mark where I would tell you go ahead and buy this without even trying it first. Uh, thanks to Rob Whiskey in the Six for lending me this bottle for review. Uh, you can check out his review, link down below. Some other people have reviewed it as well, so get maybe a, more opinions. Uh, McNair is coming out with a whole range of blended malts. Uh, really interested to try what they're coming out with. Billy Walker, of course, one of the most trusted sources in Scotch whiskey right now. So let me know what you think down below. Have you tried this one? If not, um, blended malts, where do they fit in your category? Have you seen maybe like a trend in more um, desirable blended malts coming out recently? Love to know your comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.